Welcome artist to Monet Cafe Studio in today's lesson. I think you're gonna love it. I'm gonna share with you secrets to mark making in soft pastel. Here we go. Welcome to Monet Cafe Studio. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, bringing you pastel painting tutorials and education for years now. I have hundreds of free lessons here on the Monet Cafe channel. And if you're a beginner artist or you're wanting to get back into painting after many years, I highly recommend the medium of soft pastels. So you come to the right place. And this year, it's the beginning of a new year, 2024. And I wanna focus this year's lessons on many of your requests. And one that you guys have highly requested is learning more about mark making in soft pastels. Now I have a video that's quite popular on, it's very basic, on 12 different mark making techniques in soft pastel. You might wanna check that one out. I'll put a link in this description. But in this video, I'm not only going to demonstrate or give examples of different mark making, I'm also going to create a painting so you can see those different techniques in action. I think you're gonna learn a lot. And the video here on the Monet Cafe channel will have somewhat limited content, but you'll still learn a lot. And if you want the full lesson, it's over on my Patreon page. It's real easy to become a patron of mine. All right, guys, are you ready to learn? Let's do it. Much like you can achieve different brush strokes with oil, acrylic, or watercolor painting based on the brush you use, you can achieve different mark making techniques or pastel strokes based on the brand of pastel that you use. Now, there's really just two different shapes for most pastel brands. Some of them are more round and some are more rectangular or square with edges on the sides. And I like to play with mark making for both types or both shapes. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of both of those. Let's first talk about the different parts or sides of the pastel we can use. I'm first starting with a brand of pastels that's quite affordable. It's Rembrandt pastels, and they do have the rounded shape. These are little sets, uh, micro sets, I think they're called, of different color families. I have eight of those little sets here. And again, these are like the rounded shape I was talking about. And I'm going to just show you that one of the basic things about soft pastels is often in my tutorials, you'll see me and other pastel artists using the broad side of the pastel. I would say I make 70% uh, of my marks this way. And I also typically break my pastels to be smaller. This is already a half stick. Um, I don't like uh, the full sticks are almost too wide to make broad strokes. So often I work with half sticks. And a broad side stroke is basically just what it sounds like. It is a stroke that is using the broad side of the stick. And that is versus a um, linear stroke that might be using the edge of the pastel. These are better for making lines, obviously, uh, making tree branches. And this is a rolling technique that you can use for grasses. So that's really a great thing about using round pastels is this nice rolling technique. Now, let me show you the difference with a more rectangular brand. Two of the brands that I use mostly for rectangular uh, style pastels are J. Luda pastels. They're a company out of Romania. Um, I'm gonna be working on a Monet Cafe starter set uh, with that company. I'm very excited. They're awesome to work with. And another brand that I use all the time, a US-based company that I love, are Terry Ludwig pastels. These are just so gorgeous and uh, apply so beautiful. They're very soft. The softer the pastel, the more application you can usually get and the more you can um, add pastel after you've layered a lot. So I'm gonna get one of these, let me get one of these J. Luda pastels. That's a really pretty color. They also put their color number on the stick. So now I'm gonna use with a rectangular pastel, a broad stroke on the side. And these also just apply beautifully. So that's more like for blocking in and for larger areas. And now I'm gonna show you how you have an edge on this pastel. This is also a great way to get some more linear marks. Um, we can also use um, kind of a corner of a pastel. Often I work on the flat side and occasionally on an edge to get linear marks, but also often I use kind of a corner, a little portion of it 
where I'm kind of scumbling some shapes in. And scumbling is more like just varied strokes to create more of like a pattern. And you can do that type of mark making with either the rectangular or the round pastels. Again, I'm, I'm just I'm kind of not letting the back end of the pastel come up and I'm just scumbling in little shapes with a little bit of that, that section at the corner. I'm going to show you another little trick here. Um, this has a little bit to do with mark making. A question I often get is, say I'm doing an eye of an animal and I have to go add that highlight to the animal's eye. People ask all the time, how do you get that little mark or know where you're putting your pastel with such a big chunky pastel. Let me show you what I'm talking about with this portrait of Oreo, the cow in my backyard. I am adding a little bit of a blue to the highlight here. See how big that pastel is? And I really just have to feel my way. Let me show you. So for example, let's say that we have an eye of an animal and uh, let's just say it's got a dark area and you wanna add a little highlight. I'm just gonna grab a lighter J. Luda. What I, now this one already has a nice corner to it. What I do typically is, say I'm gonna add it right there kinda of at the top right corner. I usually kind of feel, I can't see where the pastel is. I know I'm using this corner. I can't feel, I see where it is, but I can feel where it is. And I'll make a little test mark. And what happens is the more you do this, the more you learn to feel your way of knowing where these marks are going. So that's another thing I get asked a lot. How do you know where you're putting your pastel down? It's kind of a tap um, method to where you kind of feel where the pastel is going to go. Now let's talk about the pressure applied with soft pastels. One thing you may have heard a lot if, you're, um, if you've been trying to paint with pastels for a while is having a light touch. Now here I have a Jack Richeson hand rolled pastel. I love these pastels. And I'm gonna show you, this is very basic, the difference between a light touch and a hard touch. Um, a light touch is basically just really lightly layering, just so gently. And you want to create a, uh, paintings that initially have a light touch because you're really just building the different layers of your pastel painting. And when you keep a light touch, another thing you're able to do is mix colors. Yes, you can mix colors with soft pastels. Uh, not exactly like oil and acrylic, but say that's a, a kind of a blue that I just put down. Let me get more of a yellow now. This is a, a Rembrandt. And um, I'm going to just gradually layer some of this yellow in. Now I'm working on a kind of yellow buttery surface, but you'll, you'll start to see how this mixes into green. And if I had a hard touch or a hard application, you wouldn't get that layering and, and new color of combining the two layers. So that's a light touch. I've heard artists say, I think it's Karen Margulis, a light touch is the right touch. And you definitely wanna start out your painting with more of a light touch. And of course, we can make um, a mark that is more bold and has more pressure. So this is a really pretty little blue purple color. And I'm going to take this one and make more pressure with this one, okay? I'm pressing, I'm trying not to press so hard, I knocked my board over here, but that's gonna obviously make more color application and a broad and, um, and pressured stroke so you get more color down. So that's the difference between pressure, light pressure and heavy pressure. This one is best for mixing color and for your initial pastel applications. Now let's talk a little bit about pastel strokes and how it's really more painting than drawing. Drawing is more linear and pastel is actually painting because we're laying down larger areas of color. Let me show you the difference. Let's say we're doing a tree, all right? So we do a tree and we, we think we're just gonna do a tree and make some shapes for the tree. Um, and then we'll, um, We'll make some a trunk for the tree, and um, and there's our tree. Okay, so that's a linear drawing. That is not a painting. And now let me make some strokes that are more of a painting style versus a drawing style. I'm just going to go within the shape to show you the difference. I'm going to get me in some dark. This is a dark green, um, and this is back to using the broad stroke. Okay, 
and I'm just getting in kind of, I always say I paint from the inside out, like the innermost dark parts of this tree. And then I'm going to come in, I kept a light touch, all right, I used a broad stroke and a light touch. And now I'm gonna come in with some greens to suggest like a highlights where the, where the light is hitting. And I'm gonna get a green that's a little bit um, cooler green. Let's say the light is coming from this side. I'm still using a light touch and I'm using kind of a scumbling technique. Remember me talking about that? I'm just kind of scumbling in some of this where maybe some of the light is catching on some of these outer um, tree leaves and, and, and uh, branches there. Okay, so I just layered. There I did a little layering technique. I did a little scumbling and I did a broad stroke. Now I'm gonna come in, we often work too dark to light with pastel. Again, I painted the inner darkest part and I'm gradually layering to get to the light. Now, the light is warm, so I wanna give a little bit of a lighter. Um, now this is again, just using the broad, not quite scumbling, but little staccato marks. Um, staccato is a musical term, where I'm just catching some of the light. And I think you can see the difference of um, the linear stroke versus broad strokes. Uh, with painting. And we can even come in with even some more light highlights. This is a really bright, pretty color. Let's say there's the, this is has uh, hard to, again, like to feel your way technique here, where I'm having to kind of feel where some of uh, the pastel is actually hitting the paper. Now we've got a little idea of a tree and the same thing would apply to like the trunk. Working dark to light again, a little dark brown for the trunk and a little lighter highlight applied. And now I'll share with you more mark making techniques that make fun effects in pastel painting. I really like this one for creating tree branches. All right, this is a Rembrandt pastel. And what I'm going to do, kind of what I did here, is I'm going to do a tree trunk and I'm going to do a press and release technique. This is another type of mark making you can do. What I'm doing is I'm using kind of the the edge or the, the corner of the pastel here. I know tree trunks aren't usually blue, but this works for flower stems as well. Um, I'm going to press hard and kind of release my pressure, press hard again, and, and just move my pastel in different directions. Press and release. You see how you get kind of that broken line? And again, this works great for tree trunks and it works great for flower stems. Another technique that's often used in pastel painting is something that's called broken color. It's sort of the scumbling technique, but adding one color on top of another. So let's combine some colors that might look really pretty together. I'm gonna to take this pretty pink here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make little random marks of this pink in various places. And I'm pressing with a medium pressure let me get a lighter color, this lighter yellowy color, and I'm going to do the same thing and make little broken color marks kind of in between the spaces there. And you can choose how much you want it to, to soften it. Uh, the pastels will actually start to blend themselves and you can make some nice techniques with this um, or nice effects with this for even flowers. Now let's do a couple of different colors with this. I'm gonna pick this color here and let's do more colors, broken color with vertical strokes. Um, another thing you wanna keep in mind when you're painting is the direction of your strokes. And often what I like to say is your strokes should follow the object that you're painting. Uh, it's not exactly what I'm doing here. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Now, let me get a pretty color to add to that. Well, I'm just gonna add a blue in the same kind of analogous color family. I'm gonna add some um, blue strokes. I'll try to keep them the same width. And what can visually happen, it's an optical illusion, is you actually kind of start to get another color, similar to this layering technique, but with different mark making. So that's kind of fun. Um, you may notice there's some artists, old master artists that use this. It's kind of similar to pointillism. Pointillism is where your marks are even smaller, and you, you're really doing a painting using just little small marks and um, combining things to uh, make a full painting with. 
Now let's talk about blending with soft pastel. There are various blending tools that you can use, even your fingers, and that's a whole nother video in itself, but I wanna share a little bit with you here. So let me lay down, this is a Jack Richardson pastel. Let's say we're making kind of a cloud shape here. I have to resist the urge to, you know, get carried away with the painting. <laughs> now let me add kind of a lighter value, say that the um, you're, it's catching some light here. So I'm gonna add just some, same, same as with the layering of the tree, I'm just adding where I think the sun might be hitting some of the parts of the clouds that are kind of, you know, sticking out. And then what we can do is we can either use our finger or some other sort of blending tool, I'm trying to wipe it off, to kind of just soften that cloud. And um, you can choose the degree of softness you want. You see how that just made a nice, wispy, dreamy cloud. If you'd like to learn more about blending clouds, you might enjoy my video where I use a three color method to blend clouds and get a nice neutral cloud color. And yet still another technique is called feathering. Now I'm gonna grab uh, this Rembrandt pastel because it's a little bit harder. And feathering is a little bit more like you're just making kind of some um, linear marks that are a little bit random. Similar to the um, broken color, but you're using more linear strokes. And this could, this could be used like in, for a field of grass. And again, you can use that rolling pressure or rolling technique with the round pastels a little bit. Um, you can vary some of your strokes. That's what you definitely want to do in your painting. And that's what's gonna happen when I create my painting. You're gonna see a lot of this come together. So that is um, feathering, but we can add another color to it. So we can feather, let's say there's some really cooler colors of this grass kind of down beneath. So we're kind of just feathering that color together. Let's get some of that light grasses that are reaching up over the top. And that's a bit of a feathering technique. One other thing I wanted to cover before we move on to the painting portion is the direction of your strokes. Now I don't have a whole lot of room left here, but I'm going to, uh, I'll make this work for me. Okay, we've got, let's say we've got a landscape here with some grasses, ignore that tree, all right? We got some grasses in the foreground. See, that's another thing. You can see how much, how easily I can blend. All right, here's our, here's our landscape. Um, we've got some darker trees in the background. Bear with me while I just develop this a little bit. Um, we've got like, let's say we've got some dark tree shapes in the background. Maybe we have some really far away on a hill back here. All right, and we've got some, some foreground grasses here. Now, you see how my strokes are vertical here? If you're like in a field and you're kind of down low, you're gonna see grasses that are vertical. And they're usually a little darker, especially in the deep shadowy areas. But then as the grasses recede into the distance, um, they're not going to be as tall for one, so my marks are getting shorter. They're still a little vertical, getting a little shorter. And then at some point, they start to stop being vertical and start being a little bit more horizontal. And they flatten out. And then gradually in the distant field, they will become totally a horizontal shape. And then I'm going to come back in and add some um, highlights on this field. And when fields flatten out, often the sunlight will just hit on them and get more light as well. So keep that in mind that your strokes in the foreground will gradually go from vertical and as they recede, shorter, 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 and then eventually horizontal. Let me see if I can get an even lighter green to really, oh, this one's really light. But let's pretend like that is a really bright sun there and it's just catching a little bit of that hill back there, maybe a little bit right here. And then maybe a few little, same thing happens with flowers, by the way. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about that one. Let's add us some pretty pink flowers, okay? Let's say we've just got some, who cares about the variety of flowers? We've got some of them that are reaching up. This one's still in the foreground. It's reaching higher, just taller. And um, nice little flower shapes here. And then, I sound like Bob Ross. And then gradually, as these flowers go back into the distance, let me get a different color here, they are going to flatten out and they're gonna get smaller, of course. Maybe see how they're getting just a little smaller? Get a few little flowers back here. 
and then eventually, smaller, 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 eventually you get a blanket of some of those flowers in the distance layered over the grasses, just like we did the um, distant grasses. So gradually your strokes will go from bigger to smaller and flatter in the distance. So hopefully that example gave you an idea of when to transfer your strokes from vertical to horizontal. Now let's actually create a real painting using these techniques. And now that we've learned a little bit more about mark making techniques with soft pastel, let's put it to work with this soft pastel painting that I'll be creating. I'm using a surface that I really love. It's Sennelier Pastel Card. Sennelier is the same company, the French company, that makes the Sennelier pastels I used for the mark making demonstration. And they also make this surface that I really like. I fell in love with this um, after I'd been painting a little while. And it's a sanded surface. If you're brand new to pastel painting, you'll learn eventually that a lot of the really good quality pastel papers are sanded, much like sandpaper, hardware store sandpaper. And it allows for multiple layers. You don't have to use sanded paper, but uh, many professional artists like it. And I love this surface. It's not water friendly. Some are, uh, many brands that I use of papers are, but I didn't wanna use any liquid medium with this pastel painting because I wanna keep it very beginner friendly. So this will only be using soft pastels and no liquid medium. But I love this because it is, it's a soft type of uh, effect that you get with this paper. So I really love it for landscapes that I wanna have that romantic impressionistic feel. So let's get started with this. I'm gonna mark off an 11 by 14 or, or 14 by 11 size for this. And here we go. The reference image I'm using is from unsplash.com, a great copyright free site for reference images. I will have a link to this beautiful photo in the description of this video. And now let's put these mark making techniques to use. This version that you're seeing on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel will be sped up substantially, but I will slow things down to describe different mark making techniques that I'm using. And once again, the full version of this tutorial, which is mostly real time with all of my commentary, will be over on my Patreon page. It's easy to become a patron. Not only do you support this channel for only $5 a month, but you unlock hundreds of lessons and become part of my Patreon family. And it would be great if you go ahead and like this video, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'm first beginning with a little Prismacolor New Pastel. I actually did not use this one in the demonstration that I did, but they're hard little pastel sticks, and they're really great for this stage that I call blocking in. Notice I'm using the broad side again. I'm laying it flat, but you might can see that the pastel actually has started to get a little point to it and it's because I kind of lift up on it a little bit. I'm not using the whole broad side of the stick. And for this stage, I'm basically doing a value study. I'm looking at my darkest areas in the painting, my middle values and my light values, and I'm creating a roadmap for myself with this first initial stage of the painting I call blocking in or establishing my values. And I use the broad side of the pastel for the majority of this blocking in. And we work with pastel painting from large to small. We don't start out with little teeny details. We block in our biggest shapes and values first. Now once I have this done, I want to create kind of a, a more moody effect. I'm using a piece of pipe foam insulation that you can buy at any hardware store and it works as a great blending tool so I think you'll notice as I blend how it softens things and I am making my strokes directionally and now I have a great roadmap to get started I'm first beginning by establishing even darker areas by using this brand new set of J Luda darks they created a set of darks based on my recommendation. It's really been great working with them as I'm curating a set for the Monet Cafe channel. And it's a father-son team and they're just the sweetest people. So here's this luscious, gorgeous little set of darks that they now have available. And this is the darkest in the set. And it really is great for establishing the areas of your painting that really have those darker values. And it's almost always vertical elements in the painting, such 
as trees and foreground elements such as deep grasses as you see me developing here. I continue to use some of the J. Luda pastels from the dark set. This one was great for getting distant trees. It's a nice neutral bluish purple and values decrease as they recede so it really worked out great to get in some distant tree lines. Also too I am using some of their other colors to block in some of the grass uh, shadowy areas. I once again use the same color and notice how I'm changing my strokes from vertical at times to shorter vertical as we did in the demonstration and then sometimes to even horizontal bands. This is a little bit of a lighter uh, bluish purple. Pardon my hands moving. That's from my Patreon version where I gave full uh, commentary during the painting process. Now notice my bands are becoming horizontal in the distance. See that? And now I'm going to be using some pastels from a Jack Richeson hand rolled set. I love this little set. It's called his landscape set and I wanted to go ahead and get in my lightest value which in pastel painting is almost always going to be the sky. I am still using the broad side of the stick as I have with this entire process and I'm turning it in ways to kind of carve into some of those tree shapes and those tree shapes will start to take form by a process called negative painting that we also uh, call sky holes. We're carving in the shapes between the branches rather than painting them positively. Now I'm back to this little J. Luda set. It has some nice greens. They're a little bit darker than a lot of the bright greens and a little bit duller. Um, so these are really great for getting in your initial grasses that aren't really getting that bright sunlight. And watch again as I change my direction of my stroke from vertical to horizontal. Now this is another set of J. Luda pastels. It's actually not a set. It's one that I chose my own colors, which the company does allow you you to do. I'm speeding this up even more to get to the flower portion where I start using different marks but notice here even in the grasses I changed my mark making a little bit more of kind of that scumbling or those little staccato short marks to give that feeling of grasses and things do get a bit more detail as they move forward from the background to the foreground so you'll see me start to develop more detail as this painting progresses. That's just a scumbling technique I'm doing over those trees to give the idea of some light hitting the trees. And now I'm developing the clouds a little more, um, still using the broad side of the pastel, um, but shorter marks. Now let's get to these flowers. I'm going to slow it up a bit here. I am making, remember how I talked about a light touch? My pressure here is not super hard. I want to give an idea of some flowers that are kind of buried underneath these deep grasses. And they will not be as bright or colorful as the flowers that are on the surface. So I'm you see I'm directionally going more horizontally as I get into the distance and I get more vertical and uh, delineating a little bit more flower shapes as I move into the foreground. And once I have a few of these darker flower areas buried, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. Now these pastels, even that darker red that I used, uh, are from the Jack Richeson hand rolled reds set. Now notice my mark making here. Do you see how it's more punctuated, more of that staccato um, pressure I was talking about little um, almost like the broken color remember that example from the beginning I'm adding bits of brighter red uh, into the areas of the darker that I've added not everywhere just um, in suggested areas and my marks are getting more horizontal in the distance to suggest bands of flowers we're not going to see those individual flowers in the distance and now I'm going to go even lighter with some of these reds and it's again from the Jack Richardson reds set and what happens when things get into the sunlight they get warmer so this red is a little bit warmer a little leans a little bit more towards orange and I'm again just choosing a few flowers that may be peaking up a little bit higher than some of the others and my mark making is a bit firmer and I'm still establishing some of my darks notice in the reference image how dark the foreground is doesn't mean I have to make it that dark but I realized it was a little bit unfinished at the bottom so I reestablished some dark so that I can add more grasses on top of it for some of my final marks now I'm holding my easel because sometimes I press so hard I'm actually moving my easel I'm speeding it up a bit uh, again to be able to get to some of the grasses I'll be making using some 
different types of mark making. And notice the process, though. I work from large or basic to detailed. I still have not gotten in any of the really specific detail for any flowers. Everything is very loose. Oh, I wanted to work in some of this pretty... Uh, periwinkle color into the grasses to echo the color from the sky. All right, here is some of the different mark making I'm doing in the grasses. I've turned this J. Luda pastel vertically, and I'm using the edge of the pastel to get in some more of these grass shapes. Notice I'm not drawing or um, making marks that are these long vertical grasses like you would think of painting grasses what am I going to do I'm going to make um, drawing marks that are vertical I'm instead suggesting grasses reaching above the tops of some of these masses of flower groupings um, ones that are just kind of peeking up over the tops which will catch the light and that's why this pastel has gotten lighter and a little warmer in color uh, just think of the logic of it all sunlight does lighten things and warm things up so that's why the tops of grasses um, follow that rule and now notice how I'm making these little horizontal bands to suggest some of the grasses in the distance and I'm speeding things up a little bit more now until I get to some more textural marks I'll make in the foreground. But do you see these lighter bands of grasses I'm adding now? These are the grasses that are really reaching up higher than everything else. And I'm doing the same concept with the flowers. Another thing you'll notice is not only do elements get more detailed and individualized in the foreground. They get larger, so that's why I have made some of these flowers a little bit larger. Notice I switch from my right hand to my left hand a lot. Um, I think you'll find, uh, we've done this on my Patreon page before, that if you work with your non-dominant hand, often you get um, refreshing marks that are just a little bit more energetic and lively. Uh, plus it's convenient when you're working on one side or the other of your painting. So as you can see, some of these flowers have gotten more punctuated, um, pressing harder, and not so much in the background, but more in the foreground. Now, here we go with this mark making for some of the grasses and leaf shapes in the foreground. And what I did was I took my reference image and I zoomed in on it a lot to look at just some of the shapes of the petals or leaves that are in this image. I'm not necessarily trying to create the exact type of flower. I'm just getting a general idea. Now here are marks that are a bit more of that um, broken color or pointillism idea. I'm just getting little short marks that are lighter for some of the little uh, shapes that I saw in the reference image. If you look at the reference image and zoom in, a lot of these marks I'm making were more of a yellow, like yellow flowers. Um, but I decided just to make them, I don't know, just little um, greenish colors. And now I'm going to show you how I'm working in the sky. I used a pretty little almost turquoise blue color that I'm carving in some shapes into the sky between the clouds and also carving in to the tree line. This is what I mentioned before about what's called negative painting, also called sky holes, where we're really shaping the tree from the outside rather than building it positively. And a few more final marks I made on this painting. Uh, notice the glazing of horizontal bands of red flowers in the distance. And this is where I was adding a little bit of a, a lighter value to some of the clouds just to give a little bit more interest into the sky. I also wanted to give a little bit more of that blue influence, that periwinkle color into the foreground. Again, this is called color echoing where I'm uh, taking some of the colors from the sky and putting it into the landscape. And I think it gives a more harmonious feel to the painting. I often like to get a mat and crop my image just to see. Often one painting can have various crops that work quite well. I definitely am gonna keep this one as the 14 by 11 size though. Here is the final. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you'll subscribe to this Monet Cafe channel and become a patron if you'd like full content. It's only $5 a month. And plus, I get to see your work and we have a great community of artists. It's really a happy place. All right, everyone. God bless. Happy New Year and happy painting.